full report? That's that. Isn't that sad? That's the this full is the f- report. You got to be kidding! I'm me. not kidding you. It's nine fucking pages. They couldn't I even make it ten like, pages. I thought it'd be like nine thousand, and you'd have to read to find the good stuff. I'll give holy shit! This is it. Nine pages, bro. Nine pages. Not even printed on both pages. Okay, so overall, I am disappointed only because I don't know. I'm you not, didn't I, get I, anything. I, I, you got I, nothing. We got well. We didn't get nothing. They did admit they don't know what the fuck was. One hundred forty-three or one hundred forty-four incidences that they gathered from two thousand and one till two thousand and fifteen, I think. And out of those one hundred forty-four, one hundred forty-three of them, they don't know what they are. Okay, so at least that's a start. Mm-hmm. But obviously, they you know they know way more. I just thought, I don't know. I didn't. They weren't going to say shit. I yeah. mean, we knew they weren't going to say shit. Yeah. I was hoping. We get our hopes up on that for shit. For some type of. Aliens. Yeah, aliens. Yeah, yeah, we were sure. all hoping aliens. for aliens. Yeah. And here's why. Because we knew the other shit that they, that they talked about in here. We already knew that stuff. Like the government already came out and said, yeah, we don't know what these things are. Oh, we don't. Is hold that, on. No, no, no. We're oh. okay. Some of the things that I liked was um, where they talked about. The other, like people always say, oh, is is it um, security issues? Uh, because um, we have, let's see here. Are you talking about like China or Russia? Yes, exactly. So UAP clearly pose a safety of flight issue and may pose a challenge to U.S. national security. security. But let me find this here. Are, are you saying that in, in this document it says that it can't be from foreign either, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. It says. Okay. UAP threaten flight safety and possible national security. Um, UAP pose a hazard to safety of flight, obviously, right? There's all this crazy shit going on there, and they can do whatever they want, and we can't stop them. So that's a big issue. Um, when aviators, it says here, ongoing airspace concerns. When aviators encounter safety hazards, they are required to report these concerns, depending on location, volume, and behavior of hazards during incursions on, on ranges. Pilots may cease their tests and or training and land their aircraft, which has a deterrent effect on reporting. The UAP PTF, which is this group, has 11 reports of documented instances in which pilots reported near misses with UFOs. 11 reports in this in this thing where these pilots almost got hit by UFOs or they almost hit UFOs. That's fucking crazy to me. Um, ex- explaining UAP will require analytic collection and resource investment. So basically one of the things that they said in here was that they want pilots and people to start reporting this because in the past there was a negative connotation with this, right? So pilots and stuff wouldn't even bring it up because they would be they would be feared that they would be taken out of the plane. I brought this up last podcast though, is who do you report it to to it's, accurately document all of these? Yeah, it's, you know? this is the group it sounds like. Because um, uh, just an easy Google search didn't have anything pop up for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, this is interesting. It says it's looking for novel ways to increase collection of UAP cluster areas when U.S. forces are not present. That's as what a, does that mean? That's as a way to baseline standard, you know, UAP activity. I'm wondering what are the cluster areas? Well, that also means that they're going to be talking to non like uh, to citizens, they're going to be talking yeah. to citizens rather than just you know, and, and that's inter- that's and mitigate good. the collection bias in the data set. Wow. So, um, he- here are the things that they say these these were right. It says UAP probable lack of a single explanation. Basically, they're saying they don't know what these fucking things are. They have a couple ideas what they think they could be. One airborne clutter. These objects include bird balloons, recreational unmanned aerial vehicles, or like drones and shit, UAVs, or airborne debris like plastic bags that muddle a scene. The reason they put that in there is because w- the only case that they could explain was a large deflated balloon. So that's probably why they put that in there, right? Another thing they say what that it could be is national air atmospheric phenomenon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bullshit. Um, USG, some UAP 
observations could be attributed to developmental and classified programs by U.S. entities. We were unable to confirm, however, that these systems accounted for any of these UAP reports. So basically right there, they just said none of the 144 UAP reports. Whenever I say UAP, that means UFO. None of the 144. That's like, to be clear, is that this is like the new terminology for it yes. now, it sounds like. Yes. So that UAPs instead of UFOs. Yep. I've noticed a. Unidentified aerial phenomenon. Yeah. I've, I've noticed like UFOs kind of not used as it's much It's a stigma. Anymore. There's a stigma to UFO. People, when you say UFO, people go. That makes sense. Yeah. You know, they sing the 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 X Files theme song yeah. or something. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like fucking assholes. I have a really dumb question, just really quick. So the UAPTF, the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, is this a government agency? Yes. So let me explain how this worked. Okay. So originally, um, um, and how long have they been around? They've been around for a while, right? So uh, and they're the ones who came up with early, this. yeah, 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 early two thousands. Harry Reid um, puts together a gets gets pressured by other people around him to put together a task force. He puts together a tip. Who's that? Harry Reid? Uh, Harry Reid was um, a, a politician okay. from Nevada um, on the far left. Uh, very, depending on who you talk to, it's very divisive. What was his motivation in this? Well, he, so he's from Nevada. He was friends with um, Robert Bigelow. Robert Bigelow is a billionaire who owns... Um, Bigelow Aerospace, which is one of the, like like Virgin Aerospace, Amazon, uh, um, Elon Musk. He's like Elon Musk, right? And Robert Bigelow lost his kid, and you know before you know he you know young, and he's always wanted to try to find a way to contact his kid. So he was like looking into like you know like talking to people after death, this and though. So Robert Bigelow kind of got involved in fringe topics, and then he. You know, because he was in aerospace, he started talking to people about UFOs and then he started getting the real deal because he started talking to politicians and this and that. And these are the people that we need in it because they have the funding and, you know, yeah, the money network talks. to do it. Yeah, money talks. So Robert Bigelow pressured Harry Reid to start this group, right? Okay. Harry Reid starts this group in the Pentagon called ATIP, um, which was uh, an uh, aerial threat. Um, I forget. Let me look up what ATIP stands for here. Um, we put in. Yeah, there you go. Aerial threat, advanced aerospace threat identification program. And at this time, is it a non-government agent, or, or this is it, this is a government agency, oh, okay. a black program in the Pentagon, right? Pentagon. So that's so that's going on, Tom. DeLong finds out about it, right? When he's doing his To the Stars stuff. When he finds out about it, this and that. What year is this? Um, early 2000s. Um, he becomes friends with the guy who was running ATIP at the time, Luis Elizondo, right? Lou Elizondo gets tired because he feels like none of the people in the government, everybody he's talking to about all this stuff, they, they're, they're, they're not putting enough importance behind it. He leaves the program. He gets pissed. And s at that same time, so does a, another person in, pol in politics named Christopher Mellon, right? Christopher Mellon. Um, let me show you who Christopher Mellon is. Christopher Mellon was... Christopher... Christopher Mellon. So uh, Christopher Mellon is a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, right, for Clinton and Bush. So Christopher Mellon hears about this too, and Christopher Mellon gets some leaked videos and gives them to, to Elizondo, at, who is now working for, for uh, To the Stars with Tim, Tom DeLonge, Christopher Mellon comes over to To The Stars and brings those videos with him, right? Those are the videos that we've been seeing the last couple of years. Those come directly from that program. So they, they then... So when this starts happening, people start knowing and realizing about it's all these real. programs. And yeah, so that's that's been the last couple of years where we've been like, holy shit, did you see that video? Oh, did you hear about how they have collection sites? Well, not even that, but holy shit, there's a government program. There's a government program, yeah, yeah. And not only that, 
the New York Times article came out, right? That changed everything. And what a lot of people forget about that New York Times article is buried in that article, it talks about that they have collections of pieces from these vehicles. Yeah, that are otherworldly. Yeah. So not just that they see them, they have crash sites. Yeah. And, oh, and yeah, totally. I and, forgot about and, that. We used to talk about yeah. that all the time. So, um, so anyways, that happens. The government then says, okay, and, oh, and then at this time, Marco Rubio, who's a governor, who's a yeah, politician, he right? He says, all right, I'm going to, I, I want to find out about this. He slips into the coronavirus bill. Hey, we want to report immediately. Oh, I thought, uh, the one that in December, right? Yeah. I thought Trump did that. No, no. Trump signed the bill. Oh, yeah. But well, Rubio it. put reason, it in I thought, there. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. But but with Trump, Trump wants to know this shit too, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, That was known before Trump was ever into office that he was, you know, he, he wanted to find this shit out, you know? You know, it's these little small increments that these people are doing that are making these... Um, lead up to this, yeah. The lead up to this, which I know we're saying it's n bullshit and all that, but like I said, at least it's a small step towards, fuck, who knows, in 10 years, dude. Well, what's the most important part about this and that, um, you know, what I do want to say that is, is, is not all bad about this. We literally just got the government saying, yes, these UFOs are real. And no, they're not. We don't think they're Russian. We don't think they're Chinese. We don't think they're anybody else's. We don't know what they are. We don't know where they're from. Yes, they said we could not prove aliens, but they could not disprove it either. Right. So um, they don't know what it is. And the scariest well, they do, thing they is just, they're just trickling it out. Yeah. Right? Well, the scariest thing that is that they admit these things are super fast have no signs of propulsion, no wings, no nothing. They have no idea how they're doing this. And the bottom line is no human could pilot these things in, in, in inside of them just because of how fast they're going, how fast they're going. It would fucking turn you into fucking mush, <clears throat> right? If it, and these things stop on a dime, they do right hand turns or right turns, you know, just stuff that could not be done if a human was inside piloting. One of the things that I thought was very interesting let me go to YouTube real quick here. Don't show my screen during this part. <clears throat> Why? Because all your dick pics? Mm-hmm. Gay porn. Lou Elizondo was on... Um, I'm trying to go to my... Uh, my uh, playlists. That type of shit. Where do I find that? It's over here, right? <coughs> so Lou Elizondo went on to... Um, a podcast, uh, tw I think it was like 20 hours ago, right? And it was very interesting. It was Tucker Carlson, and he basically said to Tucker Carlson, like, let me get, let me show, let me do this. Um, one of the things that he said on there was that when he was running a tip, one of the things that they would say all the time was, you know, these things could come from outer space inner space and everything in between basically meaning it could be something that it has been going on for millennia that we just haven't noticed yet and you know or it could be this is what well, was the most interesting thing for me that he said it could be coming from the water i was just going to say that yes I th I th I th that, that feels like the newest theory that people are kind of um yep it could be coming from the water like it's, it's, they've been in the ocean like the whole time because think about it we I feel like we put we're more invested in exploring outer space than we are the ocean sometimes, yes. and we don't know what the fuck's under there. We know more of this is that's Lou Elizondo right there, and but uh, we know more about um, outer space than we do about the ocean. Yeah, that's that's wild. That's crazy to me. We'll see. Nine pages was all they could give us though, and that's pretty damn sad. But I will say this: they didn't have much time to put the report together. But they should have had a lot of... How do they not? If it's a whole agency, yeah. they hire some dudes. There's only two people working in the... Two or three people working in it. That's the sad part. What? That's Yeah, there's only three people. Two or three people. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably because the knowledge is so fucking crazy. They don't yeah. want that many people to know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>